Hello everyone, AI just never sleep. Another day we have another new AI model. We have another big update from the AI world. This time it's a new diffusion model for video generation. This comes from the tech giant Tencent, who previously created the Hunyuan image diffusion model. Now, they've introduced something called Hunyuan Video. This is a very large AI video model, and it's challenging to download the original model weights from their Hugging Face repository and run it locally on a consumer PC. When you check the files on the original model page in Hugging Face, you'll find the transformer folder is 25 gigabytes, which includes the transformer files and model files. This is for the text-to-video 720p resolution. The VAE is also fairly sizable, averaging around 900 megabytes. However, if you look at the model details, without just rushing to download everything, you'll notice that this model operates at the same level as other paid AI video generators, like Clean AI or Runway. When you scroll through the page, you'll find some interesting details. These video generative models feature over 13 billion parameters. As I've commented before, AI video models with parameter sizes above 10 to 20 billion are ideal for achieving the quality seen in premium services like Clean AI or Runway. My earlier assumptions about this model size seem to hold true. What's especially interesting about this model is that it uses dual text encoders. One of them is the LAMA, El LAMA 3B text encoder and tokenizer which is used for MLLM and captioning within the Hunyuan Video Diffusion Model backbone. The second encoder is the OpenAI Clip VIT Large Patch 14, which exclusively handles text input. This dual clip encoder setup is quite different from other AI video models, particularly open source ones, which typically rely on a single text encoder. By using two encoders, the Hunyuan video model can better understand text prompts, ensuring instructions are followed more precisely. This is significant because many AI video models struggle to fully interpret or render text prompts accurately, often producing strange or incomplete results. The MLLM text encoder, a multimodal large language model, is an integral part of this diffusion model's architecture. Moreover, instead of the typical VAE used in image diffusion models, this system incorporates a 3D VAE. The 3 dva is trained to compress pixel space in videos and images into a compact latent space, enabling it to detect object elements in 3D. This capability allows the model to generate videos with coherent object rotations and orbit angles while maintaining object integrity. It avoids issues like morphing or deformation that can occur in other models. Now, let's discuss the two types of AI models currently being released. One is for 720p resolution, which is already available on Hugging Face under the text-to-video 720p category. This version runs at a resolution of 720x1280 pixels across 129 frames. The default denoising steps are set to 30, and the GPU peak memory usage can reach up to 60 gigabytes of VRAM. This high demand for VRAM reflects a growing trend in AI video generation. Models are becoming larger and more complex. As open source AI video models improve, they are less likely to run efficiently on consumer PCs. Instead, users will need private GPU servers or server-grade GPUs to handle these large models. I believe this trend will continue. Large tech companies are already separating AI models into smaller versions for mobile or handheld devices and larger versions designed for server deployment. While this approach enables scalability, it may disappoint fans of local AI setups who prefer running models on their personal hardware. As these models grow in complexity and capability, this shift towards server-grade hardware will likely accelerate, but then the requirements and size of these AI models are becoming larger which means your local consumer PC won't be able to handle the performance. Of course, open source communities are already working on this, and ComfyUI custom nodes are being developed to run these models. That's thanks to KJ, who, once again, worked incredibly fast. Within just one day, he used his existing frameworks to create video custom nodes. As you can see, the structure of the nodes is very familiar. Just like other AI video setups, he uses a model downloader, sampler, VAE loader, and VAE decoder. 
Of course, VAE tiling is always enabled because, with large AI models, you can't generate high-resolution videos on a consumer PC, even with an NVIDIA 4090. For now, I'm skipping these custom nodes. I think I'll wait until there's some enhancement to make the AI models more compatible with consumer PCs. Then, I'll test them in Comfy UI. But as it stands, this is still a work in progress. One of the current challenges with these AI models is that they default to using flash attention. This is confirmed when you scroll down on Hugging Face and check the implementation code. For example, in step four, after creating the virtual environment and installing the dependencies, you're required to install Flash Attention version two for GPU acceleration. This is essential for running the GPU to create AI animations. Unfortunately, this is a big hurdle for Windows users at home, I'm running Windows on an NVIDIA 4090, but Flash Attention doesn't work on Windows. Instead, we have to rely on Sage Attention. Previously, with Cloud Video X or LTX videos, you could set the attention mode to SPAD. However, with this AI model, the SPAD attention mode doesn't work well. I've tested it, and it generates weird, pixelated, or noisy results in the video display. To use this AI model effectively, you need either Flash Attention or Sage Attention. While Sage Attention C and be installed on Windows, the process is tricky. You can't simply run a pip install command in the terminal. Instead, it requires a more complicated workaround. I'll post a detailed Saga installation guide on my Patreon for those interested. I'm not diving into the ComfyUI custom nodes right now because it's still an early stage of development. However, I've seen results shared on Reddit and Discord. I won't name specific sources since I'm not here to promote others, but on Reddit people have shared examples like eating pizza, spaghetti, or burgers. These results were generated on consumer PCs, but they only show one or two seconds of movement. To me, this doesn't really feel like video. So is it worth downloading all these resources, 20 GB models, just to test one or two seconds of animation? For me, the answer is no. I value my time, and time is money. This reminds me of the Mochi One Preview AI video model I tested before. Often when you try to compress large models like this, for example by trimming them down to FP8 or using GGUF quantization, the output quality doesn't match what you see in demo videos provided by the developers. After compression, the results often look like short, low-quality GIFs, nothing close to the stunning demos shown on official pages. For casual use, it's fine to play around with these models and generate one or two seconds of animation. It can be fun to experiment and share laughs with friends. But personally, when I see models of this quality, I want to use them for production. These models are already capable of generating production grade results. Why spend so much time testing for one or two seconds when you could use a server grade GPU to meet the VRM requirements and produce smooth, high quality videos? For serious projects, I'd rather run these models on a proper server setup to generate results that can be analyzed for their potential in advertising, short videos, TV shows, or other media. Replicate.com has already deployed the Hoon UN video model officially hosted by Tencent. I've tested it and it's suitable for integration into web apps or similar services. If you're just looking to have fun, you can try Comfy UI and play around with trimmed down AI models. But for production level work, I'd recommend using a server grade setup. That way, you can fully test the model's potential and see if it's suitable for client projects or media production, for those of you who use it for work or business. I think you understand my point and what to do in situations like this. And just to clarify, I'm not affiliated with RunPod, Replicate, or any of those services. I'm not trying to sell their services, just suggesting that you use any high end GPU cloud server you prefer. For me, I'd choose something that can run the full version of these AI models without trimming the size or using a lower FP8 version, which would reduce the quality of video generation. In this video, I'll show video generate result from replicate.com. It's the easiest way to work with this AI model. I'll input text prompts, adjust the settings, and generate video. I'll also test how long it takes using a H100 GPU to generate a 5 second video in the full quality resolution of the original AI model weights. Additionally, I will use RunPod to run server command implementation to use Hunyuan Video original AI model weights from Hugging Face. Coming up, I'll use Bold.new 
an AI coding agent recently launched to implement the API calls and create a simplified web app interface. This makes it super convenient. Just type in a text prompt, click generate and create a video. A clean UI like this is more practical for most people compared to downloading, setting up and tweaking everything manually. Don't get me wrong, using ComfyUI is cool, but for me, I feel like it's not worth it to use a trimming down the size of such a powerful AI model. It's like using a powerful weapon but cutting its power in half just to make it fit in a smaller space. It limits the potential of the AI model and for me, that's not worth the effort. So, I prefer running these models on a server GPU rather than a local consumer PC. Here, I've started using Replicate and tested the API call request to generate videos using the Hunyuan Video AI model. For this demo, my text prompt is, a woman in workout clothes practicing dance in front of a mirror wall. I made a slight tweak to the text prompt used in their original demo. Then, I began processing the video using an H100 GPU, which I hope has a stable performance. Let's see how long it takes to generate a 5 second video. We'll check the final timing once it's complete. Okay, the generation is finished. The result is pretty good. The model followed the prompt closely. It created a woman in workout clothes practicing dance in front of a mirror. However, there's one issue. The woman appears to be standing inside the mirror instead of in front of it. That's a bit awkward when you look closely at the video. Still, the motion and overall quality are much better than what I've seen from other open source AI video models. The total generation time was 8 minutes. This includes loading the frameworks, libraries, and sampling steps. Specifically, I set the sampling steps to 50, and that part alone took about 6 minutes and 57 seconds. Remember, I am not doing 20 or 30 steps like in ComfyUI. This is far better than some results I've seen in Discord or Reddit communities. For example, I've seen people spend 6 minutes generating just 20 steps of a 2 second animation. The outputs are more like for GIFs than actual videos. Others have reported spending 11 minutes to generate a very low resolution video, 512 times 320 pixels, which again doesn't seem practical for production level work. Of course, these one or two second animations using FP8 version of the AI model are fine for having fun on your local PC or sharing quick clips with friends. And here are some more examples I created using this AI model. The first one is a hologram projecting the loved one of a woman sleeping in a neon light style bathroom and it looks pretty great. The second one is a dystopian future with a lone robot standing right in the middle of the street. It looks very much like cinematic style video scenes here. I generated those text prompts using Llama 3.2 and brought them into the text prompt area. Another example is an astronaut scene, which looks pretty good. It's able to animate the outside of the windows, showing objects moving and stuff like that. This explosive video scene is my favorite style. It looks like something out of an action movie. You can really bring it to life. Although there is some morphing between one or two seconds when the character switches camera views, still it looks pretty nice, especially in the explosion scenes in the city. And lastly, I have a woman, like a superwoman, with some kind of special power flying through the city. Again, with this kind of fast motion, the AI video model sometimes struggles to generate very high detail. Right now, we're just using text to video for this, which is a bit like gambling with seed numbers. So we'll have to wait and see if there are any updates, like control nets, video to video methods, or even image to video techniques to make the generated video results better. So that's my conclusion about this AI model. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.